What's going on everybody? We're back in the messy garage for new bike day where I have my brand new YT Jeffsy Core 4. Alright guys, so I'm super excited because I finally went with a full suspension bike. I had to order it. It finally came in. Here it is. What we're going to do is that we're going to do an unboxing and we're going to put it together. I'm not going to go through details because there's a lot of other great videos out there that already do that. But you'll see kind of a quick unboxing and a real quick put together the different steps and at the end there'll just be some footage of the actual bike so you can see what it looks like so basically i am six foot maybe i'm shrinking a little bit as i get a little bit older maybe five eleven and a half and i went with a large frame a lot of people talk about going with the extra large because six foot is right in between the two different sizes this is the carbon frame with the core four uh, the aluminum might be a little bit different, so this is specifically for the carbon frame. I have ridden the bike since I've gotten it, and I think the large is perfect for me. I like a more playable bike. I don't need something that's going to be the most fastest, most stable bike. I want something I'm going to be able to kind of kick around on the trail, something to be able to jump with. And the large fits me really well. I was worried after reading some different forums. However, now that I have the large and I've talked to some people, they all agree that the large was the right size to go with. So for me, that worked out well. I've also gone with the black magic paint on it. They also have a Vlad red, which is really nice. But for me, I decided I wanted to go with the all black look. So components on the bike. So to start with, we have the DT Swiss XM 1700 wheels. And on those are Maxxis Minion DHR2s. So that's in the front and back. I had one Maxxis Minion DHR2 on my previous bike, which I liked a lot. I'm really glad that now I have one on the back also. So that's perfect. The suspension is a Fox suspension. On the front, the fork is a Fox 36 Float Factory. The shock, they list as being a Fox Float DPX2 Factory. However, that's a older shock. So when they actually ship the bike, even though the website does say the DPX2, they did ship it with the Fox Float X Factory Edition. So really happy about that. That's a newer, a little bit beefed up. A lot of people say it's a little bit of a better shock than the TPX2. So if you guys order the bike now or you're expecting your bike to show up, you'll probably have that newer shock on there. For the drivetrain, it's going to be all SRAM. The crank set is going to be SRAM descendant carbon, so they are a carbon. Uh, the arm length is 175 millimeters. I'm specifically saying that now because in future videos, you'll probably hear me talk about that after riding on the 175 millimeter. It's a change for me. So I'll talk about that a little bit about that in the future videos. The cassette is a SRAM XG1295 Eagle. And the rear derailleur on this is the SRAM X01 Eagle. And the shifter is also the SRAM X01 Eagle. So in this price range, there's no other bike that comes close to this. So moving on with the components, the headset is a ZS44. The stem is a Renthal Apex 35. Handlebars are the Renthal Fat Bar 35s. Now the interesting part with this is that it is the custom black Renthals. You cannot get those anywhere else. I believe YT is the only company that has the all black Renthal Fat Bars, which is pretty cool. The Grips on it are ODI Elite Motion V2.1. Already loving those. I think that they're amazing. The brakes are SRAM G2 RSCs. The seat post is by YT. It's the YT Postman uh, with a MMX remote they put on there. It's the Postman lever. And then the saddle is an SDG Bel Air 3.0. The bike comes in weighing 30.64 pounds. And for me, it seems extremely light. It is a carbon frame. The Core 4 is the top of the line core models that they have. Beyond that, they go into the uncaged models. The MSRP on this bike specifically was $5,199. And there is no other bike I could find that could touch that price point with the components that come on this bike. And that's one of the reasons why I got this. I really like the components on it, especially having that X01. Uh, and then having everything else on here is just so nice for the price. I did look at some other bikes, but for me, this was the bike that made the most sense. So in Y2's lineup, the Jeff C is actually what they consider their all mountain. The suspension on it in front and rear are both 150 millimeters, which is getting closer to that Enduro. However, because I'm in New Jersey and because of the trails I ride, I need to be able to also climb really well. So that's why I went with the Jeff C over the Capra. The Capra is an Enduro bike. However, the Jeff C is supposed to be a lot better for climbing, and I'm going to be doing a lot of climbing. 
So that's why I went with the All Mountain. I've seen people ride at parks with this and with the type of riding I would do at a park, I think that this would fit in perfectly. So these are some of the reasons why I went with the YT GFC. I've only been able to ride it for one or two days so far, and it's been amazing. And now I've kind of dropped it off at a friend's place that is going to be doing something for me with the bike real quickly before I get it back. So you will see what I had done when I get it back. I'll do another video. But for right now, what we're going to do is that we're going to open the box and get things going. So buying a new bike, you're never going to get the pedals that you want. So you have to go out and buy some pedals. I ended up going with the PNW Loam pedals. I've been extremely happy with PNW's products. So that's why I went with the Loam pedals. They were $99. I've only been on them for a little bit, but so far they feel amazing. I did want to go with the aluminum over those uh, plastic like I had previously. So we will see how they do, but here they are. You can take a look real quick. So the first thing we're going to do here is cut the tape open so that we can flip this box open. Really nice touch that when you flip it open, it says, Welcome to the family. All right, guys, so as soon as you open it, you're going to see all the different components. And over on the right, you're going to have this package here. This is actually going to be any extra parts that you ordered. So I ordered an extra derailleur hanger, which you'll see here. So it's always good to have an extra one of those in case yours breaks. And then I also ordered their Thirstmaster 4000, which is a Fidlock bottle for water. But this is the important piece. They want you to actually open up this box first. This is going to have all your different documents in it and also a really nice toolbox that you're going to see in just a minute. So as I open it up, first thing is going to be the main manual and another welcome to the family flyer. So you guys should definitely flip through that manual, take a look at what it says. However, you'll see some really great videos on YouTube that really walk you through step by step. Makes it a little bit easier visually to see somebody on YouTube maybe than going through this book, but the book is very handy to have just in case you need it. And then below that, you're going to see the toolbox. So the toolbox is really awesome because one, it has uh, a high pressure pump for your suspension, along with a hex wrench specifically for the pedals, and then also a torque wrench because a lot of people won't have those. So it's really nice that they include it. I did end up using my other torque wrench because it was just easier for me at the time. So then below that, you're gonna find some of the accessories, including your dork disc, which we're not gonna put on, some stickers, which are really nice. It's always nice to have some cool stickers. And then below that, you're gonna get some additional accessories like the pedals that we're not gonna use, some reflectors that we're not gonna use. And then in there is actually this really nice keychain, which is pretty cool. That I'll probably use for something. And then there was also the uh, device used for the SRAM derailleur so that you can align it. Now what we're gonna do is that we're gonna pull the wheels out and then we're gonna pull out the frame. Make sure that you have something to put the frame on. I actually had a plastic table that I put it on so that I wasn't scratching anything. It is really nice with the box on it and everything so that when you put it down at first, it is protected however when you're working on it you definitely want a nice base that's not going to scratch it up what we're going to do is now we're going to take off the boxes the wrapping all that protective stuff basically everything off of there and get down to the frame so that we can put it together here you're going to see the handlebars now you're going to see the stuff that covered the frame it is a carbon frame so they did a great job at protecting it So the four bolts that you need for the handlebars are already in the stem. We're going to take those out and then we're going to bolt in the handlebars. Once that's done, we're going to put on the derailleur. The derailleur hanger is already on the frame. And then from there, we're going to put the rear tire on. And then after that, we're going to put the front tire on, which I didn't have that final shot in the garage because my camera went dead. But now we're going to show you just some really nice close-ups of the bike and the different components that are on there. Again, you guys are going to get a lot more content from me in the future. So I hope you like this unboxing, putting it together. And now check out this bike. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon.